It's another Real Estate Wednesday, so welcome back. And today, uh, interest rates are on the decline, which is fabulous for everybody. So if you've been on the fence and you're thinking, you know what, I'm just going to wait, well, the waiting is over because as they continue to drop, the more people will enter the market and it's going to drive up prices and you're going to end up paying more than you will right now, especially as the spring market um, gets closer and closer. So if you can buy the house now, refinance later would be pretty great because you're going to get more house for less money now than you will in the spring market when everyone's out buying multiple offers, all the craziness driving up home prices. That being said, if you're considering taking the jump back into home ownership or downsizing, upsizing, whatever you're doing, here is some things to note. So the title of this video is how to know if a house is a good investment or what should I be looking for when investing in real estate? Now, that's not necessarily buying investment properties, but investing in real estate could also be a personal home as well. So number one would be location. So what you're gonna wanna look for is just start with the school district. That's a good telltale sign of us if it's a good area or not get on Google or go to the school board, interview them and see, you know, what are the average test scores? How, to, how do uh, parents like the school system? How do the kids like the school system? Because the school system is usually a big driver for a lot of people, even on the resale side, and I'll get into that a little bit later in this video. The school system can tell you a lot about an area, if it's good or bad, and what it might look like moving, uh, you know, five to 10 years in the future, because if you're not gonna move for a while, you wanna make sure you're buying in an area that is going to appreciate in value. So another big one would be um, going to city council meetings. Find out what the plans are for the area. You would hate to buy a house only to find out in the next couple of years, they're planning on putting in like an entire strip mall right in your backyard. May not be the best for uh, the view if you bought it because it was supposed to be on a green belt and turns out that wasn't actually a green belt and they were gonna build there. So that can be a problem. And I've seen that happen where people don't do their uh, due diligence and research before buying a home. And, you know, obviously not everything is going to be able to be found out to know, but you can find out a lot um, just by doing a little bit of research and talking to city planners or working with a realtor like myself. So the next one would be, well, back to location. One other thing would be the neighborhood itself. You know, drive by it at night, different times of day. What's the traffic like? You know, is it really congested during peak hours? You know, is there only one way in and one way out of the neighborhood? Because that could be a problem. So those are some factors you're gonna wanna look at for the location. And the next one would be resale value. You know, <clears throat> everyone thinks that it was gonna be my forever home. I'm never gonna move. And you'd be surprised how often life hits you and you have to move. So whether you are planning on staying there forever or not, it's always good to look at the resale value. So I will tell you the most common floor plan is a three bedroom, two bath, and a two car garage. That will sell all day, every day. It's a favorite. People you typically need about three bedrooms. They love a two car garage for space for their car. If they have two cars, great, but a lot of people want space for their car and a workbench or storage or whatever. So the two car garage is always a win. And then two bathrooms. Obviously the master bedroom, usually they want their own bathroom and then they need another bathroom for the kids and guests and all that other stuff. So if you can get a uh, two bathroom and then like a half bath, even better, but for sure, three bedroom, two bath, two car garage is always the winning combination. The next thing would be what the house made out of, right? So brick is usually your friend. You can always tell really quickly if there's foundation issues, if a full, if you're looking at a full brick house, but also brick is, you know, relatively, I'm not gonna say indestructible, but it can definitely last a lot longer than siding. That's not to say all siding is created equal though. So wood siding is, is great, but then you have rot and things like that. But they also make a hardy board, which is a cement board. So it's great because obviously termites aren't gonna want it because it's not wood. Um, it's pretty hailstone resistant, weather resistant, because um, it is cement. So that could be an option as well. A lot of the newer homes do utilize hardy board. Um, so that could be a great option. Um, stucco is pretty popular too, but going for longevity, stone brick and hardy board, I would say would be my recommendations for, you know, longevity and reset value of a home. Cause you can do a lot of things, you know, you can stain brick a different color, hardy board can be painted, stone can also be stained or painted. Um, so there's a lot of options to keep up with changing trends and things like that with those three siding materials. 
Also on floor plan, I would try to make sure that the two bedrooms are separate from the main bedroom. So on the three bedroom example, you would want the master bedroom over here, or primary bedroom, and then the other two bedrooms on the other side of the house. For most people, um, now if you have like a baby, you would probably want your baby close to you because of that situation. But families that have more grown children that have their own bedrooms and all of that, they're going to want the bedrooms to be separated from the main bedroom because for parents most of the time their bedroom is their escape so they want to be away from the kids while the kids are making noise playing and doing whatever that they're doing swimming pools it's another thing that i hear a lot about so swimming pools their perceived value right so if you buy a home with a pool great but do know when you go to sell that house not everybody loves a pool some people think it's a lot of maintenance they think it's a hazard for you know kids drowning all that kind of thing they don't want to deal with it so pools can be great, um, but it really depends on the price point as well. So more in the luxury market, a lot of people like to have pools because it's an aesthetic thing. It's a party thing. It's a hosting thing. You know, it's a not necessarily a status thing as much as it is a luxury amenity in the sense of most smaller homes don't have pools, but the more luxury homes will have a pool. And that's just kind of how, how they're designed. But also look at the neighborhood. You know, if every house in the neighborhood for the most part has their own pool, probably gonna want the pool because it's a common thing for that neighborhood. But if you are in a home and not, most, most of the homes don't have pools, well, your home having a pool may not necessarily add value to that home and it might be hard to sell down the road. That really goes into making the house your own though. If it has a pool, it's whatever. But if you're deciding to put in a pool after you buy a house, keep everything that I just said in mind. I will say, if you want your own pool and you're going to enjoy it and you're going to stay there for you know years to come, get the pool, enjoy it, but know that you may not get all of your money back dollar for dollar putting in a pool. Now, making the home your own is always a kind of a sticking point for some people. You know, you see the trends obviously right now still very, you know, gray and whites, neutrals are still very trendy. But what you want to keep in mind is you can make the home whatever you want it to be. You know, if you want to paint all of your walls pink, uh, you know, and have an orange kitchen and whatever, I say go for it. Make the house yours. If you're going to live there, enjoy the house, enjoy living there, make it your own. But do know when you go to sell that house, if you want to get the most money possible and reach the widest swath of buyers, you're going to have to change it back to whatever the trending thing is in the market that you're selling in. And that may not always be the gray and white and neutrals. It may be something completely different but know that if you want to get the most money for your house, you got to change it back. So keep that in mind. And lastly, you're just going to look at how long are you going to live there? If you're planning on only staying there for five to seven years. I would consider don't do anything too crazy, but some fresh paint, things like that. And then if you want to rent it out, great. If you're not going to rent it out, I would consider staying there a little bit longer just because if you've only been somewhere five to seven years, depending on how much money you put down and the state of the market, you maybe won't be making that much of a profit because typically on average homes appreciate about 4% year over year. So if you haven't been there that long, you're maybe not making enough money to cover all of the fees of selling a home, paying all the realtor fees, lender fees, title fees, all of that stuff. So, um, that could be a challenge if you're not if you haven't lived there for more than five to seven years but if you're going to rent it out which honestly would be my recommendation is to buy a home use regular um what do you say owner occupant home loans because you get a lower down payment with those and then live there enjoy it and if you have to move move but don't sell the house because you can always stick a renter in there hire a management company and be building wealth for your future. But of course, if you don't want to be a landlord and deal with that, you can sell the homes. But I would think, generally speaking, the more real estate that you own, the better, uh, more financially uh, well off you're going to be because real estate, you know, they're not making any more of it, you know, buy dirt, buy real estate, people are always going to need a place to live. So it's always a good investment to invest in real estate and hang on to as much of it as you can. That's really all I got for you today. So hopefully you learned something, share this video with a friend who might find it helpful. Of course, follow me for more real estate tips. And on this channel, I also share, share a lot of um, local content as well cool places to go and just a lifestyle in Oklahoma. So I hope you guys have a great day 
and I will see you in the next video.